All right, folks, good morning. It's Alex Forrest here vlogging to you on a wintry Tuesday in Warsaw, Poland. I have Mr. Ian with me this morning. It is bright, breezy and early. He's dragged himself out of his cave. Well, not really a cave, the Marriott Hotel, actually, at um, 8.15. And we're doing a podcast on cultural differences. It's been a while since me and Mr. Ian have uh, discussed matters daytime approach women and dating wise uh, and he's actually about to get on an aeroplane uh, is going over to Australia in a day or two he's going to be wintered up there for the summer is that right Mr Ian yeah pre-Christmas yeah yeah so you are coming back to Blighty for Christmas are you of course yes can't miss that very good very good because you don't have as many assets in the UK, you don't have as many things holding you there now as you used to from the point of view of business, is that right? Yeah, one of my businesses closed this year, which I was quite happy about really. Um, it's been a long journey and I felt it had come to it, you know, to a close point in my mind anyway. Um, so I don't, but I've still got my main business in the UK and I've got family there, so I go back. I go back now and then, I guess every... On average, probably every two and a half to three months, I go back for a week. Okay, so uh, we will just continue that little bit of an update and pick up where we left off three months ago now when we did a quite a long uh, extended podcast mm. on finding A1 and what that meant for me and what that meant for Ian. So we'll touch on that. Well, then we'll go on to consider the, the question of the day, which is something that b- both of us have to discuss once or twice obviously uh, Ian Globe trots more than I do so he's got quite a good window into the cultural differences of girls and I'm particularly curious for him to compare Australian girls because that's where he's headed as, a comp- as, as opposed to Eastern Europeans um, we will also touch on recent controversies because in terms of uh, dating uh, dudes, uh, day gamers being arrested, being uh, uh, being having their faces and their names plastered all over mainstream media and so on and so forth and basically I think that is relevant to the issue of cultural differences but before we get on to that um, I think well I am going to quiz uh, Mr Ian uh, briefly and and tenderly as I always do about his uh, what his what has happened since he last discussed to me the challenge that he faces of actually having kind of acquired a higher taste for um, women just as you might with to use the analogy of a wine connoisseur um, and uh, that's been sort of something of a difficulty in a way actually finding the, the quality girls that, is, that, that, that are not only attractive enough but whose company he genuinely enjoys such that he wants to hang out with them because he's not a, uh, a total uh, what's the word uh, seduction machine he uh, really wants to get a few girls, perhaps two or three, is that right? Yeah, I'm more of a romantic than a wham-bam, thank you man, notch counter. Um, yeah, I'm an old romantic. That's quite a nice turn of phrase. Uh, neither of us are wham-bammers. And maybe it's a reflection of Ian's age. He's quite, uh, you know, a centuri- sort of a, a, a m- mature dude these days, and obviously I'm a little mature too. Yeah, I, but it's it's been an evolution. It's it's just to, like uh, four or five days ago. It was the five year anniversary of me setting out on this new life of leaving England and travelling. And at the start of those five years, I was much more of a wham bammer. Like you know, I wanted to get laid a lot more. Now I'm less concerned. Uh, we've spoken about it before, but I'm le- I'm less driven by that. It doesn't excite me so much. If I don't genuinely like the girl, I'm not bothered about having sex with her I'm just like I'm just not kind of it's getting old I guess no, it's, just, it's just no it's just evolution well, I, right so it's like once you've no I, I, I was going to interrupt you there because it's not just getting old um, you've made a couple of grouchy remarks since you joined me for breakfast this morning um, which is quite it's, it's quite uh, endearing you're sort of a, a grouchy bear vibe at first thing in the morning um, but that's not true it's just simply uh, the as I'm sure you'll agree, it's just uh, the downside in inverted commas is you acquire uh, standards, don't you? you? You simply have standards, and you're not so 
at, uh, driven at the mercy of your dick, put it bluntly. Yeah, I've kind of got through that phase. And it's, you know, if I go on a first date with a girl and I find her attractive, but I just mm. don't, just, there's nothing there personality connection-wise, I don't bother following up. Whereas three, four, five mm. years ago, I would have done because if I found her attractive, I'd want to sleep with her. But now I'm, I'm not bothered about sleeping with her if I don't, if there isn't more there. Yeah, so I, I've i never been really, even at the beginning, I wasn't much of a wham-bammer. I've simply had my adventures in that in the bedroom. What Ian says sort of chimes with the experience I had on Sunday, which is a, a North American girl. I think we'll come on to discuss and segue into cultural differences, actually, through this, uh, who I approached. I was doing some work in a coffee shop on Sunday morning, I approached her in the street and discovered that she was from Canada, from Toronto. She was just over here in Poland getting some medical uh, treatment of some of some sort. Um, so a sex change, I think, wasn't it? And uh, anyway, so we had a good conversation in the street. It went very well. Um, and then we got on an instant date. And it was fabulous I really enjoyed just and I flirted and teased her and held her hand on the instant date and all the rest of it and it was just a really enjoyable instant date yeah uh, and then uh, but she was flying back she was only two days in Warsaw so I was like, like uh, okay uh, and actually <laughs> but, you know, in that situation then you've got two choices haven't you and I wouldn't necessarily just think oh well I'm not going to see her again so I won't bother but you've got a choice either run the train or just not bother and you have to make that decision very quickly in that situation like how much do you find her attractive how much do you you know what what are you looking for what are you looking for in that day and you need to decide run the train or just think well she's leaving in two days that's not what I'm looking for because I am a gentleman that is looking for a wife Mr. Forrest, uh, and then you should obviously just decide, nice to meet you, finish your coffee and, and go home. Yeah, but uh, although I am a gentleman looking for a wife, I'm not just going to be like, uh, oh well, absolutely no physical contact um, until the, f- the 15th date, you know. Um, and and I also want to, be car- to carry on improving skills in this area. That's what keeps me bright-eyed, bushy-tailed. Uh, but you are right, I did... I, I was caught, I think, in a, in a dilemma. I there and then arranged to meet her for dinner, and I said I'd pick her up at a hotel at 7 o'clock. And I turned up at 7 o'clock. She was looking very drop-dead gorgeous. She's just my shape, voluptuous, lovely personalities. And, you know, we went for dinner, but she talked non-stop. There was only... Um, one about herself there was only one uh, moment when she asked me a question about me she, when we got back to her hotel room she didn't even know that I was she had to think is he a lawyer or what does he do for a living where does he live and by then we'd been together for about five hours so she asked me one question gave her the answer and then I was just wondering whether she might follow it up with some more questions and start to ask me about myself I felt like a girl you know and she didn't. She just jumped tracks, went back to talking about herself again. Now, and she was quite high level and, you know, North Americans can be a little bit full on, can't they, and confident, 31, a 30-year-old girl. But the point is that in spite of the fact that, you know, really, I didn't want to, I wouldn't have wanted anything, anything long-term with her. I still wanted... Uh, you know, to have sex with her. Um, but the more I do it, the more I find it's just... I've now had a few of those magical moments with genuinely hot girls that I've really liked, like in in um, Belarus, for example. But So I don't really need to go on proving something to myself. And it felt a little bit like I was just trying to prove something to myself and get a trophy. Oh yeah, well we can use that to say, come back to that in a bit then to go into the cultural uh, differences debate. Um, so we just wanted to touch quickly on where you are since the um, since we last did a podcast. 
have you found a sort of passion that you want to get into like you know you're fascinated by the indigenous peoples of the Amazonian rainforest and you've you've now tried to change your life you've done a PhD in um, early prehistory in, in South American continent and you are you know sat here with your pith helmet and your backpack and you're ready to go and and you couldn't care less about whether there are any women over there so all you're interested in is a fresh project fresh inspiration have you found one no I don't believe so no I have not found one but I have I'm more aware of what I don't want than three months ago or whenever that last podcast was I I am I'm I'm I've because like I just said a minute ago it's like it's about it's five years now since I set out traveling and have effectively been homeless for five years so I did have an apartment here for a year but I didn't actually live in it for a year I spent more than six months of that year here there and everywhere I think I went to Australia twice and South America once in that year so um but I feel I've come into a new phase in my life where I don't have the desire to travel which sounds weird considering I'm flying to London today and then flying to Sydney tomorrow but I guess it's more how I feel about that trip is that I don't I'm not looking I'm kind of more dreading the jet lag than I am excited for going which kind of tells me a lot about how I feel about traveling I've been quite content staying in one location for a while in Russia and I'm just I'm happier staying in one place so next year I'm definitely going to travel less and I'll probably just split the year between about two locations Okay, so there's been a change, but not, you've not necessarily found a fresh project after five years of being involved in women and dating. Have you found a, a few girls that you, that you want in your life permanently since we have you made progress on that part of the discussion that we had? Well, yeah, I found a, a fine wine um, who you met briefly when I came here with her in last month, set, well, no, two months, I don't know, about two months ago I guess, um, but, and, I, and one thing I don't even consider myself to be anymore is a day gamer, I, I just don't, I don't, I feel distant from that world in a way, it's not that I don't approach girls in the daytime, because I do, but very rarely now, but it's a long time since I went out to day game like to go out with the intention of doing a session it's I think it was like spring there was a few days in spring when I did and there was a few days in probably January when I was in South America <coughs> and that's it this year but so it's months since I did I just so I think guys who are listening will be asking well how have you got girls in your life if you're not going out and approaching girls well I still do approach occasionally, so my fine wine that I that you met here, I'd met her a few months ago, and yeah, I met her in the street. I kind of caught her eye, like you know, our, we caught eye contact momentarily as I walked past. She was very attractive, and I I went and spoke to her, um, and I will still do that. But in the last three or four weeks, I've only done that three times, but. One of them was in Moscow last week, and that ended up in an instant date. I spent an hour with her. And the other two girls, I both had dates with. So I've only done three in the last three or four weeks, and I've had dates with all of them. There's something just so much more, like it's been a gradual progression for me where I was kind of doing stacks and stacks of approaches a few years ago, you know, like oh, well over a thousand in a year. And then I, then I scaled that back a lot and my results like my margins whatever improved greatly and now it's like I've watered it down as um, reduced it down even more there's something and I would have thought this was like wishy-washy and I wouldn't yeah. want this advice to be heard by somebody that's new to it but there's something just more authentic and genuine that the girl picks up on you go out and you just approach 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 you cannot you can bro, you can be good at it and you can be relaxed and you can get you know but it's still not the still it's not genuine 
how can it be if it, she's the seventh approach in that afternoon or the eighth or the fifth whatever how can it be and there must be something subtle in that in your sub communication and something that they can pick up on and that's really that's really so true and that's exactly that's been my experience as well over the past couple of months I took your advice and didn't do any YouTubing podcasting sort of rolled off of all of that and took a break from that I, I haven't made hardly any approaches in, in the last half a year and yet I've got a date with a lovely girl on Saturday night whom I met at a function in a, a bar where some other friends were meeting and I met her I saw her on a table with a friend after the the, the evening had finished and approached her using the daytime approach skills but just in a different situation 10 o'clock at night at a bar on a Friday evening other girl that I saw last week had a lovely time lovely lunch with her and uh, she was a coffee shop approach whilst I was just simply working on a Sunday morning in a coffee shop doing some writing um, and the one that I met on Sunday that I'd just spoken about uh, you know I, it, it was just authentic because I'd just finished studying my Polish on a Sunday morning again it was 11.30 or something and she was walking dreamily along wondering what to do with the spare day while she was in Poland all the shops had been closed by the peace party on <laughs> Sunday shopping here um, and then this fantastic sort of uh, instant date came out of that but it was entirely authentic and what's interesting here about what we're talking about is that you, know, you, think, you tend to think well how can I have women attractive women in my life if I'm not actively going out and hunting but bizarrely um, I've got as kind of much going on as I did have when I was approaching like a crazy rabbit I don't regret my crazy rabbit times well you can't it's I mean I think I remember having a conversation with you years ago when we were both pretty new to this and what you set out really I think most guys do and I did and I think you did is you want to get good at this comfortable in this area of your life not to be an active day gamer for the rest of your life but to acquire the ability that when you see a girl that you're genuinely attracted to that you've got the balls you've got the confidence to just go and speak to her and it kind of goes hand in hand with what we said before with like dates and if I'm not that into the girl on a date you know the higher standards it's a natural progression that I might not pursue a second date with a girl if I don't enjoy her company so much because of higher standards it's the same on the street so like four years ago my standards were lower so there were more girls that I was kind of you know I was like oh yeah I'd like her I'd like her I'd like her but now I walk along and my standards are higher so I'm looking at girls and, like, eh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that would be like a weasel if four or five years ago but now it's just genuine I'm just looking at them going yeah, yeah. and I'm, I'm looking for the gems ones that really do spark something in me and I'm genuinely curious about and isn't uh, isn't it true a leading question here but that when you see these gems you it makes it all that more authentic you know your heart starts beating fast you're genuinely attracted to them and when you run over I guess they pick, pick up on that yeah it's all more authentic so it just it just works more so yeah so my progression in the last three months is realization that I don't want to travel and that I don't consider myself a day gamer but daytime cold approach is still my uh, number one way of meeting girls in yeah. my life I don't have like a social circle where I've been spending a lot of time for the last few months I don't have any other real way to do it oh sure I could do like tinder and all that stuff but uh, I'm not the quality of that is is poor so in my eyes the best option for me is daytime cold approach so it's still my favorite way but I don't go out actively hunting yeah um, yeah yeah uh, well well put and I think that really is when you embark upon this journey that really is the ultimate goal is to uh, have the skills such that you can approach girls during the daytime in the evening I mean not clubbing and partying I think that's a whole other way of approaching women staying out late on the Fridays and Saturday nights 
um, as is online, which neither of us are particularly attracted to. But it's a perfectly valid way of meeting women if you want to, you know, enter that arena. Um, I can't help but think of that as one of the expressions that I'm most fond of, which is that this stuff is a thorn to remove a thorn. You do need to go out and be a bit of a jackrabbit. You do need to go through your rite of passage, Ian. And you do need to do kind of slightly crazy stuff that totally is wouldn't sort of, is not socially acceptable and you're afraid to tell your friends and your family about, certainly when you first start out. But then, if you do it, put your heart into it, and get good at it, and, and are passionate about developing the skills. I remember you used to talk across this microphone, you'd have your, your phone out with your stats and... Uh, you'd, yeah, we'd have a, have a little tips and methods and skills, and I remember you starting to say, "I don't do that any longer on dates. I don't play the truth game. I don't do, you know, strawberry f- tell a strawberry field story. I don't try and spike three times physically and three times verbally." But by God, you don't regret the sort of the rocket fuel that you had to launch you into space. Yeah, completely. And I don't, I don't keep stats anymore. I don't. I just, I've just let all of that go. And I used to be obsessed with like how many dates I've had this year, how many approaches I'd done, how many phone numbers I'd got, how many of those phone numbers became dates, how many of those girls that I had dates with did I sleep with. I just say, which is, just just let it all go. Well, that's because it's become integrated now. It's a thorn to remove a thorn, and that is an expression that means once you've used a a thorn to remove a thorn from your foot, you then throw both thorns away. Pregnant pause. (laughs) And, but any guys listening to this, don't be weaseling yourself because there's a lot of guys who are, who are around our age who kind of are flir- still flirting with this stuff, haven't really committed, haven't really put in the, the work and, and, you know, put, put their heart and soul into it and risked being com- coming off a crazy guy because we're all, you know, subtly self-conscious about the way the world perceives us. And, and... You've got to be a sociopath not to, and but they haven't really grabbed, you know, this area of their life by both horns. Um, so if you're a newbie listening to this, absolutely embrace the crazy adventure of running around like a jack rabbit. And if you're a, a more mature dude who may be flirting with this, don't be thinking that you've gone through a rite of passage if you haven't. Just get and just go back and get stuck in. Yeah, not just newbies like intermediate even a guy that's you know i guess it's different for everyone but it's taken me basically five years to get to this point anyone that's listening thinking oh i just like the idea of that just doing the odd approach now and then i don't want to be going out doing lots or this that and the other there's no shortcut i don't think to this i had to put in hours and hours and hours days weeks months years thousands of approaches countless dates pain suffering like you know but it was all it was good it was worth it yeah okay good well let's move on to the cultural differences part of the podcast Uh, so yeah I guess yeah yeah if you'd like to introduce the subject because I think you're you feel quite passionate and quite it's quite interesting insights about this yeah it was something that I suggested a while well fairly recently but because it was, it was, it was the cultural differences that really kicked it off in my mind and, and really got me thinking with girls from Eastern Europe, particularly like Russia, that are far more traditional. Uh, and there was one girl in particular, uh, the girl that you met, the, the fine wine, um, who, who just, I just couldn't quite get my head around coming from a different culture, Britain and the West get my head around this so she was always very generous with her time she would do she would do lots of things for me she still does like I wanted when I was viewing apartments she was calling estate agents she was arranging viewings she was attending viewings for me this is a girl in in Russia just to give it a little bit more concrete context yeah so you know I don't speak the language uh, so she was just she was incredibly helpful with her time like all sorts, you know, just doing lots of things to help me. If I ever needed help, she'd be immediately. Sorry to interrupt, but this is before you got jiggy with her? Uh, yeah. So the viewing apartments, we hadn't slept together at that point. 
um, but we'd had a few dates, made out a lot, but we hadn't slept together at that point. She was, yeah, so she was always generous with her time and she was very giving. Um, and then, yeah, then we started having sex and she was always still the same. She was really generous. Then we came away. We came here for a weekend. <coughs> um, and the one thing that annoyed me was money. So, like... I, I, we, I paid for dinner both nights anyway and then we went just for a hot chocolate and I said to her oh you can buy me a hot chocolate right because there was something in my head that didn't like the fact that I'd paid for well you'd paid for a flight presumably yeah and she was uh, you'd, well I won't second guess the story anyway so I just wanted her to financially contribute it was going to make me feel a bit better about the fact that and she just wouldn't she was like, no, like, it's you know, it just a damn hot chocolate. And she's just like, no, you're the man. <laughs> and I'm just like, what the fuck? And this like, this like triggered that in my mind. I'm just like, well, I'm just like, and I was, I, I was annoyed about this. I didn't overly show it, but this pissed me off. Um, and I was thinking about this for some time. I've not really thought about it recently, but, but it's just this like, value placed on money and the cultural difference like so I got one voice in my head that's just like well you know she's just taking the piss completely but from her side and and I okay so I went into this further didn't I I'd spoke to other girls that I knew there and some girls that I was just kind of friends with and I tried to dig into this topic of men paying and like what what the fuck's going on here <clears throat> and I discovered that there were some girls that said that even just purely friends. I was like, what if the guy's just purely a friend? There's no romantic anything. Like, let's say, like a, a work colleague or um, a university um, working on the same project at university. And you go to do some work in a coffee shop. And then the bill comes. And they were like, oh, yeah, the man pays. And I'm like, what? Like, what? I just can not get my head around this. So they've got this ingrained thing, like the man pays it's the man's role but I didn't like it but so I'm but but then I you know I tried to step back at it and look for it I'm like okay so I'm placing a very high value on cash monetary money but then another voice must said saying she's not just taking the piss you know she's done so much to help you in other ways putting her time into things arranging viewings translating things for me helping me with some packaging for a product i wanted to launch with translate and she'll just do it instantly like she'll be at work and then something will come up and then she'll be making phone calls and like doing things for me and so i had this battle like in my head like one voice saying why well, she's just taking the piss and the other's like well maybe she maybe it's your world viewing it. and then just more recently when i was in moscow and i had the instant date with this girl <coughs> That was interesting. She touched on a topic. She was talking about her career, jobs, and she told me how she'd had a boyfriend, a British guy, and she moved to London to live with him. And after six months, it just didn't work out because of cultural differences. She, she said she just uh, we could, she, she just couldn't she couldn't be with him. And she came back, and she was talking about. She said one thing in particular about in her job, there was some people being hired for promotion all right and it was mostly the men that got hired for promotion and she was helping select people as well that were going to get promoted and she said just completely matter-of-factly just like well of course you know you hire the men 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 need the better jobs anyway she said I'm, I'm a girl and the girls what do I need money for I just need money for coffee maybe a new handbag but I can get a man to pay for that. Anyway, a man needs money because he needs to support his family. A man needs money for his wife. He needs money for his children. She said, so of course we're going to give promotions to men. Who was this lady? Just describe her age and so on and character. She was late 20s, maybe 30. Um, Russian, lived in Moscow all her life. Very feminine. Um... Yeah. So not a wallflower, a, com a confident feminine woman, or or a wallflower. Yeah, and just, I'm just like, wow, like, 
I can't like imagine these words if these words were spoken in, on a public forum in Britain what sort of reaction would come back it, it just quickly it reminds me of an assistant a Ukrainian assistant I had here called so, uh, um, Solia do you remember her and she was like 23 she had a Manchester accent because she spent a couple of years in Manchester with her family before going back to the Ukraine. She now lives in Kiev. Strong, confident, tough little, fun girl, really nice girl. And, um, and I remember having a, an argument with her about religion. And, and, um, she's, and I said, uh, so why don't you have women priests? You know, what, what have you got against women being priests? I mean, it's not that long ago in the UK that women were allowed to be priests. Would it be 20 years, 30 years, something like that? Oh, yeah. It's not actually that long. And now it's like you, the suggestion that a woman can't be a priest is ridiculous. Anyway, I said to this girl, I was um, putting the argument for the, uh, the, the West, feminized West, I guess you'd have to say in this context it makes sense. And she's, I, I said, I said yeah, what, what, why can't a woman be a priest? What's wrong with a woman that she can't be a priest and look after? I mean, she's got great qualities and she said oh no women can't be priests because they're full of sin <laughs> <laughs> it was obviously some cultural thing she'd she'd picked up on it was it was so funny because it was like uh, other than that remark i would just consider her to be a confident girl at university in the uk she you know she wouldn't so it was a, it was a definitely a clash but like you're describing a clash between two, it's like two different seas meeting. It's just a cult, big, just, just it frazzles your mind, doesn't it? And it makes you realise the cultural imperatives that you live with, as well as the cultural imperatives that they live with. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, so going back, I think with me, the the only, I I love how non-politically correct from a British point of view a lot of their culture is I think it's just they got more common sense I think common sense has been left behind in Western world to a great extent but the one thing that I did and I guess still do is just this money thing just the, just the, the paying for everything thing because and I don't know where I guess it's like it's maybe it's ingrained as some kind of fear that you're just have being taken for a ride for your money or something I but I prefer the culture of the East, Eastern Europe, like being more feminine. And so you have to just, I think you just have to accept some things are a little bit different. Yeah. And, you know, let's be practical about this. If you want to uh, meet and attract and have relationships with girls in, from the East, Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, not so much Poland, which is changing quite rapidly, as, but uh, certainly in those places, you either you've got to work around that and and be ad and and adapt, or you're just not going to get the dates with them. Um, so you kind of you kind of have to. Yeah, I think you know, there's, and there's definitely traps people can fall into if they so a guy might think oh okay so like you go to like eastern europe and it's more of like man is provider but and that is kind of in a broad sense true a man is expected to be provider like, that is true but that's not the route to go just like with this girl in particular before we had had sex I'd never bought her more than like a coffee or a cup of tea so and then it was just this one trip where I just felt like I'd paid for a few things and I wanted her to buy hot chocolate and then she's just like no but it's not like I'm buying her handbags or a new jacket or designer this yeah well there is a fine line there isn't there I my story is a girl uh, who was in um, Belarus and one of the most fantastic sexual experiences as well as sort of in terms of dating high quality women that I've had, had ever had my whole life and uh, on the second time we uh, made love sweet love I was flying backwards and forwards from Poland 
can only see her on the occasional weekend. I remember she um, asked me if I could buy her a laptop computer. Do you remember that? I got this message. It was like, certainly matter of fact, a bit like a girl might say, can you pick up some English tea because I don't have any here on your way through the airport customs. No, for her it was like, oh, not just a laptop, thank you very much. It was a MacBook. When I asked her, I was like, oh, right, what sort of computer? Oh, a MacBook or well, MacBook Pro would, would do. Do you remember that story? I, I do remember that story, and then it just immediately springs to mind the conversation on the instant date with the girl in Moscow last week, where she said, what do I need money for? I just need money for a coffee. If I need this, I need that, I can get a man to buy it for me. Uh, and if that, that's the culture, then goodness, they not going to suddenly jump tracks and act in a completely different way that's basically going to probably put them into a state of poverty by the sounds of things um and uh, now but interesting i think you do have to work with the grain here so i was like well no but um i said what perfume do you like i'll buy you some perfume on the way through customs and i remember and she sent me a picture of a bottle even then it wasn't cheap you know (laughs) and (laughs) Um, but I didn't tell her I bought it. She se- she sent me a picture earlier before I got on the aeroplane a few days before. Um, and we were in m- my apartment and we were had a nice meal together and we were making out. And I said, I've got a little present for you. And she said, where? And I said, it's in the room. And I put the perfume in a, on a shelf somewhere, slightly hidden. And she looked round and her eyes set, uh, lighted on it. And she rushed over and she was absolutely delighted and it hadn't it was so sweet because it hadn't you know and after that you know <laughs> we went straight to the bedroom basically and she and she actually said it's very difficult to get that quality of perfume where she lives so rather than you know closing down oh no the girl's not contributing he's not showing the bill then next I think you you know, you have to work with the grain of the culture with which you operate. Yeah, but it, and, it's, and, and guys, uh, you know, never be spending more than a few quid on a tea, coffee, or a glass of wine before you've had sex with them. Would be my advice. Well, maybe, but I uh, paid for a girl's flight to visit me in Warsaw. Do you remember? We, and it was only that w- over that weekend that we made love. Maybe it's a slightly different, again, we both know a guy who is more sort of established, wealthy, and he's like, well, why, why do I have to sit in a restaurant because you day-gamers, the guys, tell me that I'm not allowed to spend money because it won't get me sex? And he has, he, he does, wouldn't say he flashes his wallet around, but he does pay for things. And perhaps, actually, when you are a slightly older dude, that's, you know that line blurs a bit. I mean, I uh, I agree with you. I can't I can't imagine you ever you know buying a bottle of champagne in order to get a girl into a bedroom. You just wouldn't you wouldn't do it. Um, yeah, she'd be lucky if she got a you know a fizzy water. You know, I do buy little gifts, but for me, like it will just be a little gift. So when I went away and then I came back like the girl we've been talking about the fine wine I bought her some like she liked uh, the palace of culture here in Warsaw she like really liked it so I bought her a tiny little statue of the palace of culture which cost me about two quid and a pair of socks pink socks with the palace of culture on. just very small little cheap things but in my mind I don't know how the girls feel about this but it's like it's the old saying it's like the thought that counts that I actually put some thought into buying something that I know that she has an interest in yeah. not spending like a few hundred quid on some fancy necklace or something yeah just the thought even a postcard with a note is 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 is, is, is a great thought um, but in terms of just this question of uh, you know spending money on girls in order to uh, have sex with them um, now you would never put a girl on an aeroplane to visit you in a city until you'd slept with her have you ever done that? Because before, just before you answer, that's what happened with me and uh, this uh, Belarusian girl that you know about. And uh, she is not particularly well off. And 
she was like, well, if I'm going to have to pay for quite an expensive visa um, and I'm coming over to visit you, the least you can do is pay for the flight. So I bit the bullet and I paid for the flight. And, and we did have a romantic weekend. In fact, she messaged me yesterday and she wants me to go over and visit her in Minsk for some more fun and adventure. So that worked for me. Putting it, And I was, I was unsure about whether to do it because I thought, would Ian do something like that? Probably not. And yet it seemed to me seem to be at least um, she's doing the work in travelling paying for her ticket is not an unreasonable thing to do yeah so I guess the answer is no I probably wouldn't but I wouldn't say never circumstances if I'd had a few dates with this girl and we got on very well and we'd kind of you know perhaps got close to having sex but not done yet then I wouldn't rule it out but more than likely I wouldn't so I was just thinking when I was staying here in Warsaw and there were some girls in other countries these were girls that I had already slept with who were three of the most attractive girls I think it was only one of them though so they all came to visit me one of them I paid for her travel because I'd already slept with her and I put her on a bus <laughs> for about 12 hours <laughs> a bus yeah, 12 hours bus journey. 12 hours on a bus, 12 hours here, 12 hours back. Um, so I probably wouldn't pay for a flight for a girl of pants out of the no. There's also probably the case that you go for slightly younger girls than I do. That may have a part to play in this too, don't you think? Yeah, and I'd be more likely to just jump on a plane myself and go and see them. Um, but there might be a point... I'm like I'm saying, I'm not ruling it out. If it was just seemed much easier that they come to me, and I'm thinking, well, otherwise I'm just going to jump on a plane and fly to them, and then I'll have to pay for accommodation there. From a financial perspective, it might be cheaper to just pay for their flight to come and see you and stay with you. But it's just something about paying for things before you've been paying for expensive, relatively expensive things before you've slept with them. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a thing like buying bottles of champagne and flowers and expensive dinners is... It just never ain't going to work, is it? it? It just isn't the right vibe. You know, you, you're kind of training the girl on some sort of primitive level that she doesn't have to give out the price. You, you're going to throw money at her before she's even given it out. <laughs> some primitive, like... Yeah, which sets of the tone of the relationship as being one of, sort of a negotiation. And that's not really healthy or helpful. I guess what we're sort of angling in our own lovely rambling way towards here is that there is... Um, it's like the, un the underlying motive, isn't it? If a guy is saying to a guy... What a guy, guy needs to look at is what motive is going on in his, his, his heart. If it's like, I'm afraid to be clear with the girl that I'm a high value guy I think she's a high value and attractive girl and uh, you know and I'd like to make love sweet love um, you know then that's 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 one situation but if it's a situation where a guy is like oh I haven't really got I don't I'm not really secure in myself uh, I, I put the girl on a pedestal I don't believe I can get her I'm going to use my wallet in order to try and paper over those cracks just maybe that will work it's a bit like going to a strip club and pay it's, it's, it's a step towards paying for sex in fact paying for sex is more honest and open than than the sort of the guy who produces his wallet i think so in a way it's kind of like where the guy is coming from don't you think and one guy could be quite different from another guy a guy who's a successful seducer and is, is wealthy he might just decide to buy an expensive dinner because he'd like to enjoy an expensive dinner. So it's kind of kind of a subtle thing. Yes, yeah, place it's coming from, I guess. Um, yeah, some guys set out to use money to get girls, and a lot of guys think they need money to get girls, um, which they obviously don't. And in Russia and other Eastern European countries, because uh, guys listening to this will know that uh, hopefully from having followed enough 
daytime approach, day game stuff. Um, but I think what we're saying, you were qualifying that a bit by saying where you're dealing, dealing with a different cultural um, situation, it, you do need to sort of adapt and cut your cloth accordingly. And, you know, actually, sorry, Ian, she's not going to get her wallet out for that cup of hot chocolate. You had to suck that up, didn't you? I did, yeah, and I didn't, it annoyed me, like I said at the time, but <clears throat> when I really step back and I look at the big picture, I have to say it's this cultural difference. And if it was a case that she never really did much for me, it would have had a bigger, I would have had to really evaluate the situation but the fact that she done was always and still is always willing she's just done just done me a favor this morning with something i left behind in my apartment and she's gone and met them and she's gone and collected it and gone out of her way to, to do that before she went to work so yeah that just balances it really it's just it's just that at the time at the initial impact i was just placing a really high value on money and not enough value on time basically and to talk about uh, cultural differences in uh, Scotland and England we've had a recent controversy over in the UK with a guy day gamer arrested in Glasgow and convicted spent two years got two years in prison on a sex offenders register um, and the BBC panorama program seemed to have been behind it and um, uh, exposed in inverted commas uh, street attraction uh, a dating day game company based in London um, first thing I should say from from my perspective uh, particularly the chap in Glasgow it's quite a, a lad culture uh, um, get the notch culture and as far as I'm concerned particularly where covert filming and audio is concerned it is a bit creepy. Yeah, but, right. However, we're not going to be debating that so much. In a way, what I'd like to do is compare the different cultural environments. Let's compare Glasgow to Moscow, for example. <laughs> yeah. Well, just on him quickly. I mean, but his sentence wasn't anything to do with covert filming or recording, was it? He was not convicted for that at all. Yeah. Um, it was just purely, um, basically his street approaches that caused upset caused a reasonable person to fear alarm or whatever um, but yeah like you say I can understand why society found him objectionable but I think it's personally a step too far that the criminal law found him objectionable but anyway on the wider point then so comparing it with Moscow so the one girl that I did approach last week in Moscow that I had the instant date with she very quickly was praised me for speaking to her because I it was strange I'd walked past her it was late it was about 10 or 10 30 at night it was cold it was light snow and minus three real feel on my phone said about minus eight it was cold and I was just like on my way home I just nipped out to go to a cafe and I was walking quite briskly and I walked past her and I just saw her and there was she really there was something about her she was dressed really nice and had this nice hat on and and I was just I just like no come on I just wanted to get back it was cold and I carried on walking and I probably carried on walking for nearly a minute probably and then I just stopped and thought fuck's sake no I've got to go. I've got to go back. So I turned around and I went. She was walking fairly slowly, and I went back. Took me a bit of time. Got there. Caught up with her. And then I just, you know, spoke to her. I was like, you know, sorry, it's a bit crazy. And she's like, hang on, didn't I? You didn't you walk past like two minutes ago? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, exactly. I said, and I kept walking, and I just thought, no, I have to go and speak to that girl. So here I am. You know, come back. You looked really nice, blah blah blah. I gave her a compliment, and she was like, "This it's so, oh, it's so nice. This is yes, this, I'm so good." And you're where you're not obviously Russian. Where are you from? 
blah blah British. She, oh, she's like, yes, it's so good. I don't. Not many British men behave like this. Like, and she was just really praising the fact that I'd come back, taken the initiative. She's like, that's what men should do. Men should take the initiative. And I made a joke to her. I said, well. You get myself uh, arrested if I was in Glasgow <laughs> she didn't just went you know, <laughs> just went in one ear out the other but it was just you know it just in a little snapshot the kind of difference but individual girls will always react differently and I'm sure there would be girls in Glasgow that would greatly appreciate it as well but it was just that little moment snapshot of the cultural differences yeah that's a, yeah that's perfect example isn't it of the cultural differences I, mean, I guess I, I, I think common sense does prevail I think this chap in Glasgow he's been pilloried because there's pressure on the police and he who knows we weren't there in court maybe he was a bit too aggressive and assertive and did make did actually terrify a girl or two there was five of them who gave evidence it is ironic that he gets convicted for that rather than what I think is more in a way reprehensible which is the covert invasion of privacy that's my that's something I really struggle with um uh but I'm sure common sense prevails I mean I I I read an article online while I was researching the vlog that I did on the subject that said that the police had known about Addy Day Game for quite some time uh it people had previously I mean he, he's, you know, he's often in the streets as are the coppers and he'd previously been uh, someone had previously approached the police about his conduct and they said to, they said, said to them well what can we do he hasn't committed an offence um, but once the old BBC panorama decided to get on the old hobby horse um, and then the police are incredibly sensed uh, Incredibly sensitive. I think they are very sensitive to the, pu the, the public perception, um, and they caved in. I think it's a, it's just, uh, just one of those things. I think 98% of guys out there, are, uh, hopefully even in Glasgow, are getting, you know, gen genuinely good feedback from girls. I wonder if there are any active day gamers in Glasgow anymore. <laughs> if, if you're out there, leave a comment. That's the problem with that. That's the real evil of the, of this. Is it paralyzes men at a time when they, in the West at least, they really don't need to be paralyzed. You know, no, they, they, <laughs> most men are already cutting their balls off. They don't need to have them cut off for them by media outrage. Uh, and it's the classic style of the media who love like to uh, to flock after a single story, isn't it? That that they they'll find they'll find the evidence that they want. So they'll find characters like Kevin Spacey or Donald Trump or high-profile figures. They'll pillar, pi, pillar, pillory them, uh, and and then now those guys probably are a bit aggressive and see sexually seedy. Um, but what the the problem is, it puts out a message. But the vast majority of men, because there are very few Donald Trumps and who was that? Sorry, not Kevin Spacey, but that um, Harvey Weinstein, the film producer. You know, uh, yeah, he probably was a little bit. The highly successful, powerful, strong, aggressive men. They're gonna. But the problem is, it puts then puts us because the press makes a blooming big noise about it, and social media makes such a song and dance about it. Men become terrified and get driven into their into their bunkers yeah and it's not just what it portrays and paints men to be it's what it paints women to be the media narrative is that women are these delicate little wallflowers that are easily manipulated that are unable to just say no to a guy in the street and brush him off and walk off that all it takes is a man to learn a few lines taught to them by these evil people like street attraction or Addie A game and then suddenly women are just going to be misled or just go down this path that they don't want to go down like they really don't do women justice women are a lot smarter wiser and able to just brush a man off than they yeah. portray them to be yeah certainly it's not my experience that i've been uh what's the word the aggressive masculine force in you know even my experience in in sexual dynamics i can't i can't you know girls have always 
been one step ahead of me <laughs> when it comes to dating and daytime approach. And then, uh, and certainly my experiences have all known how to look after themselves. And you mustn't look at single, isolated, anecdotal in incidences that are blown up, fa fanned into a bomb, fanned into bonfires, simply because I don't know why it is. It's just that the, the it's just the, the, the sort of the, the atmosphere, cultural, social atmosphere seems to be at least currently, at least in the last fifty years, infected with this. So let's conclude by, I mean, I met this, Ameri this North American girl on Sunday and it was so noticeable how different she was from girls that I meet here in Poland. She's half Polish, which is why she was here, but she's grown up, spent all her life in, in North America. Are we right to say that women in the East and Middle Europe are different from Western Europe and the United States? Or have we just sort of got some sort of confirmation bias at work? You know, American girls really like that. Well, it's a cliche, and there'll always be exceptions. Mm -hmm. But I think, by and large, yeah. I mean, like you said, she didn't ask you any, or she asked you one question. What was that question out of interest? Can't have forgotten now. She <laughs> asked you what your name was. <laughs> 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 What's your name? It was very much in passing. Yeah. Okay. So she uh, she basically asked you nothing, and yet you ended up back in her hotel room right so obviously this is just one girl but the chances of that happening in eastern europe i would say are less the fact that she only asked you one question means she threw zero shit tests at you right so she just didn't give a shit she wouldn't want to test you out test your metal test your frame she didn't want to test like because eastern europe I go on a date with a guy in Russia, just like they're drilling you, do, 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 like firing bullets at you to see if how good you are at dodging them or catching them and throwing them back at her and stuff. It's like a game, yeah? She's really testing your metal. And the fact that she didn't ask you anything and just talked about herself, and that's, I think that's quite typical, like at the meal last night. Simon said that's typical North American girl, like just wants to talk about herself and just la 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 la, which is all that's one thing but then to just talk about herself no shit tests and then you end up back in her hotel room it's, that's a massive difference and I, I think that's not unusual let's say that it's, it's different culture listen I think we should start to wrap up now because I'd like to hear about Ian's holding his finger up one, only one more thing and then I want to hear about Australia because you're now going to another uh, westernised feminised continent so would you like to talk a little bit about how apprehensive you are about Australia. Yeah, but one more thing before you move on, which I think I might have just forgotten now. Um, but okay, no, yeah, on that point with her, I said she didn't throw any like shit tests at you, which she didn't, but the fact that she didn't let you get a word in and talked about herself was in a way testing your frame because you could have smashed that down and taken control. Sounds like she had control of the conversation which set the frame in itself. You could have smashed her frame and taken control. Anyway, moving on. So Australia, or do you want to make a quick well, comeback on that? It didn't feel like she had the frame. I don't think it would have ended up in a bedroom if she had. In fact, it's a little bit easier to sit back and escalate because I came round her side of the table, took her hand. Did I worked the, 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 I, I work the physical I'm magic. I would just let her go on, yeah. <laughs> just talking away and you're just physically touching her I've put it very kindly it got to that point where so there's no point in trying to compete on that all the tricks in the box verbally which I'm usually pretty strong at there's just no point in using any of them a anything I try bat 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 back to the topic of herself back to a story or an anecdote about her so I just like a just like the submarine like a submarine operated beneath the level of the water Oh, good going. Um, all right, Australia. Uh, well, I've been numerous times before. I'm not apprehensive. No, I'm, I'm apprehensive about the jet lag. I'm not that interested in um, Australian girls. Um, they, it's, it's funny, like, they can often look very attractive, but there's something that you can't quite pinpoint, which isn't very feminine about them. If you just see, like, a still image of, of one <laughs> an Aussie girl not moving, you can think she looks very attractive and feminine. Yeah. But as soon as there's movement and she's walking or talking, something, all the femininity somehow drains out. 
It's um, it's just kind of not there. There's obviously obviously except exceptions, but I don't find Aussie girls attractive. There are lots of tourists um, in parts of Australia, um, but I'll only actually be in Australia, Sydney for ten nights, um, and probably half of them will be a bit of a zombie. Uh, and then I'm off to New Zealand for four or five weeks, and that is just relaxing, exploring New Zealand, watching two test matches of cricket, for, and um, just chilling out. My end of year chill out. All right. Well, you've probably heard quite enough of Paribus, so uh, but hopefully there's been some uh, veins of gold in the within the. I'm trying to create a stupid metaphor, but I can't think of one. You know, it's like like mining. I sometimes feel these podcasts a little bit mi- a little bit like a mining exercise. We go down to these rocks, we're hacking away, get, digging up all sorts of rubbish, and then eventually we hit we hit, we hit on a bit of a, a diamond or two or a rich vein of gold. So uh, thank you for uh, being a fellow pioneer adventurer, and um, yeah, see you back in in the UK perhaps or in Warsaw because I think you are going to be settling down a little bit between here and an, another Russian city in the new year that's your current plan isn't it yeah I might escape to South America if winter's a bit bleak for a month but that's my plan for the bulk of next year uh, so we'll catch up in 2020 what kind of month do you think oh I will I'm planning to visit Warsaw for perhaps a week in early to mid January so we can catch up then then if it's bleak, I'll disappear. If it's not, I'll probably stay for a bit. Hello, right, boss. Happy travels. Bye, for, bye from me. And goodbye from me.